welcome to lecture 6 of thin film deposition module uh, of this course. Uh, we have discussed, uh, we are discussing thin film deposition methods and in this uh, we are discussing specifically first physical vapor deposition methods, PVD methods. And uh, among uh, PVD methods we have discussed uh, thermal evaporation and electron beam evaporation. And next what we want to discuss is another uh, physical vapor deposition method called sputtering. But before we go to sputtering, uh, we will uh, discuss plasma and plasma physics in next couple of lectures because plasma is very important for thin film deposition processes and many thin film deposition processes use plasma. Okay. So, uh, in the next two lectures, we will uh, first discuss uh, plasma and its physics and then we, we will go to sputtering. To start with what is plasma? So, plasma can be defined as a weakly ionized gas. Okay. So, let me write it down here, it is a weakly ionized gas. Uh, we will discuss term this weakly ionized later, but it is a ionized gas and which consists of ions of the uh, of gas, it consists of electrons and it also consists of some neutral species. Okay? So, these are the three main constituents of an uh, of a plasma. And in effect, in a plasma, they are present in a such a number that overall a plasma is charge neutral. Okay. Now, uh, you would have seen plasma at many places and you would have seen a glow associated with the plasma, but not all plasma may, might have a glow. Okay. So, there are different types of plasma okay. and there are uh, different regimes in which they exist. Okay. So, uh, those we will discuss here, but let me first uh, discuss uh, with the help of this uh, schematic diagram that how plasma is created. Okay. So, suppose you take two anodes or two electrodes, one is anode and uh, one is cathode and you connect it with the uh, voltage source and you increase the voltage. Okay. So, what would happen that there are some electrons always present uh, in your uh, natural environment. Okay. So, first, first electron will uh, start to ac accelerate towards anode. Okay. As it, uh, it is accelerating towards anode, it will impact or collide with a gas molecule or atom and in the process it will ionize this gas uh, molecule or atom and uh, one electron from the gas or um, molecule will come out and there would be a positively charged ion of gas and uh, gas atom and also you will have one additional electron. Now, these two electrons will be accelerated by this uh, potential. Now, these two electrons will further uh, multiply to give you 4 electrons and 16 and so on and so forth and then you will have a cascade of electrons. Okay. And in the process, you are also creating these ions. Okay. And this uh, avalanche process in which electrons are multiplied uh, is called Townsend avalanche. Okay. And it is also called Townsend avalanche breakdown in which this electron current increases very rapidly because you have so many electrons being produced due to the process of ionization, then you do not do not have a control over the uh, number of electrons and the current. Let us switch over to this uh, graph here which shows a relation between voltage applied between the uh, between the electrodes and the current. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, on this uh, y axis is voltage and on x axis we have current. Now, if you see that initially there will be very small current or negligible current. 10 to power minus 16 or low uh, below that. As you increase the voltage, the current will also increase to some extent. You need initial very high voltage to introduce some more current because they are very 
uh, much less ionization okay but after a certain point you will reach an extent of electrons then you don't need to increase voltage to increase current because these electrons will be self multiplying due to the to the process of ionization so if you see in this range the current increases at the same voltage you don't need to increase voltage to increase the current okay then uh, there will be a phase where actually the voltage to sustain the same level of current decreases and the, and the current creeps increasing still so to control the current you need to decrease the voltage okay and uh, these are the townsend and dark self sustained discharge corona discharge and then you have a uh, region of uh, normal subnormal to normal glow discharge okay in this you need very less voltage to sustain large amount of currents beyond this if you want to increase the current then you have to increase voltage again and then after this threshold you start to see arcing okay so this is the whole process uh, under which different types of plasmas exist in this uh, course we use no, uh, normally glow discharge so our main attention will be focused in this region somewhere here where we have glow discharge and that we see as a glow in the plasma okay now let's come to this uh, this expression here which explains the electron current as a uh, uh, in the plasma okay so uh, alpha is the townsend ionization coefficient okay because as more and more gas atoms are being ionized more electrons are being produced which will carry the current so the uh, the current increases there is another factor gamma e which is townsend secondary electron emission because once electrons reach the anode they are lost they will be part of the external circuit then you need to have a supply of secondary electrons which is uh, given by gamma e okay so and the current expression the electron current in townsend uh, discharge is given by this expression now this alpha which is townsend ionization coefficient is given by this uh, this expression uh, let me give you the brackets here and this is the townsend ionization coefficient okay and vi is the ionization potential of the gas atom or molecule it uh, defines that how much energy you, you require to take out one electron from the gas atom okay e is the electric field and lambda is the mean free path of the gas which is uh, as you remember you might remember from the previous lectures Uh, depends inversely on the pressure okay and q is the charge okay so we have this expression for alpha now to have a self sustained plasma this current should be very large okay in this region so uh, you don't have to provide any additional voltage for plasma to keep it uh, uh, keep itself alive so in that case this i will tend to infinity okay very large and which means that this factor which is in the denominator must go to zero okay so 1 minus gamma e let me go back to copy it exponential of alpha d minus 1 this expression should be equal to zero okay at a voltage when this expression because alpha has this electric field which de depends on the applied voltage this is the applied voltage so uh, this expression depends on the on the applied voltage so when once this expression becomes zero the current will try to go to infinity right and from this we can calculate a quantity called breakdown voltage so vb here is the breakdown voltage uh, 
for that gas ok. So, breakdown voltage means that after this voltage the plasma will be self sustained. So, you need to apply this voltage to help plasma ok self sustained plasma ok. Now, uh, A and B are coefficients in this and this V B depends on product of P and D. P is the pressure and D is the distance between electrodes ok. So, V B by D will be my breakdown field ok. Now, these uh, this equation is known as Partial equation and the curves which, uh, which are shown in this graph are called Partial curves and these are shown for different gases. Uh, how the breakdown voltage changes with uh, the product of P and D pressure and the distance ok. So, if you see that these curves for a fixed separation between anode and cathode at low pressures you need very high voltage ok and also at very high pressures you need very high voltage ok. Now, we can explain this phenomena like this in the low pressure regime when the pressure is low there are less gas atoms to be ionized ok. Now, one electron is traveling from cathode to anode and if the gas pressure is low it is going to encounter very less number of gas atoms and ionize less number of atoms thereby giving rise to less number of electrons ok. So, and so to increase the current you need to increase the voltage that is in the low pressure. In the high pressure region what happens is that you have too many gas atoms in the path of electron. So, when the electron is accelerating it will ionize the first gas atom that it uh, uh, collides with, but between this and the second uh, collision the electron does not accelerate enough or does not gain enough energy to ionize the next gas atom ok. So, uh, because there are too many, uh, too many collisions uh, between uh, gas atoms and electrons. So, electrons do not get sufficient time to gain energy uh, uh, in the potential field. So, in this case also you need to increase the voltage to have self sustained plasma or have a breakdown voltage ok. So, looking at this you can see that there is a sweet region of P and D which where you need uh, very less voltage to have self sustained plasma and it is this region we should be uh, working in. So, that we do not have to apply very large amount of voltages ok. Now, if you have a plasma between two electrodes there are different regions of the plasma it is not uniformly distributed ok. What are these different regions are shown in this uh, curve uh, in this diagram on the top and how the potential field V electric field charge density number of uh, ions and electrons and the current varies uh, in these different regions is shown uh, below this diagram ok. We will discuss few of these uh, regions which are of uh, most important to us ok. Now, so we, if we start from cathode which is our negative electrode the first region we have is called Aston dark space. Now, this Aston dark sp uh, space is very thin ok and it uh, contains very low energy electrons ok. Remember electrons are uh, are being generated at the cathode, cathode is negatively charged. Uh, so, it will repel the electrons, but since electron did not gain enough uh, energy by acceleration. So, th only the low energy electrons are lying in this region and also this has high energy so this should be energy not E 
high energy ions okay now contrary to electrons ions are coming from anode okay uh, or uh, they are present here they are accelerating towards cathode okay they are accelerating towards cathode so just before they impact the cathode their energy is highest okay so high energy electrons are found in this region okay then we see a very thin region of glow which is called cathode glow okay in this what happened is d excitations of positive ions okay through neutralization okay we'll discuss this now what is happening in this region which is cathode glow is that you have uh, positive ions which are accelerating towards cathode and in the process we, when they interact with electrons somewhere in the negative glow region they get excited which means some of their electrons of these ions go to excited uh, uh, to higher energy state so which is an excited ion okay when this excited ion comes to this it uh, interacts with the low energy electron and gets de excited okay so that means electron from high energy state in the ion falls back to its original low energy state and when that happens it emits a photon which is the glow okay and that we see as cathode glow okay and after that exists a cathode dark space which is the most important uh, region of a plasma because the entire voltage that we apply across these plates exists between uh, in this cathode dark space okay so uh, in this region electrons are starting to gain energy by acceleration and also uh, they are less uh, ions here because as they are coming close to cathode they are going to impact in the cathode okay so ions do not hang around in this region okay so in this region less ionization because electrons do not yet have very high energy and almost all the potential difference which exists between cathode and anode between these two electrodes is between is exist in the cathode dark space okay and uh, and uh, this is dark because there are no uh, excitation or de excitation in this region okay this region is also known as cathode sheet okay the next region is negative glow in this negative glow now most of the ionization process happens most of ionization of the gas happens in this region and we have both electrons ions and uh, excitation and de excitation of ions ions slash atoms okay so uh, this is the most active region of what is happening in the plasma electrons have gained sufficient energy to ionize gas atoms and now uh, some of these gas ions are either excited or de excited and in the process they give a glow this process also gives a glow okay again after this there is a small dark space and then we have a positive column where low energy ions uh, usually are present okay as ions move uh, towards cathode uh, they gain more energy and towards anode there is also an small space called anode dark space okay so these are the regions of uh, a plasma given sufficient separation between the two electrodes if you narrow down the uh, separation between these two electrodes all these regions will still exist the positive column will be reduced or sometimes it may even be completely eliminated okay all these uh, regions will still exist so positive column is somewhere away from the plasma it it is no glow 
region there is not much happening there it is just many low energy positive ions are just present there okay so these are the different regions of a glow discharge plasma which is usually used in thin film deposition and for the sputtering process we will uh, see that most of the time we only talk about the region up to negative glow from cathode to negative glow region. Now how do we define plasma like the how much plasma we have gas we can define by pressure and volume but to define plasma we take help of a quantity called ionization factor okay fi which is number of electrons divided by number of electrons plus number of neutrals so ni is number of ions or number density this is density per unit volume density of ions and E is density of electrons and NO or N0 is density of neutral atoms. Okay. So, total gas density N will be equal to N0 plus Ni okay. ionized uh, ions and neutral gas atoms and since the plasma has to remain charge neutral we should also know that an i should be equal to an e okay and that is why we have used uh, uh, this expression an e rather than an i over an i plus n o okay now to quantify it uh, say for at a pressure of uh, around 10 millitor Okay. The gas density is approximately 10 to power 14 per centimeter cube. This is N, total N. Okay. And if for a plasma, given plasma Fi is order of 10 to power minus 4, then we know that Ni is equal to Ne should be equal to 10 to power 10 per centimeter cube. Okay. And we know this, uh, this is the region where we operate most often for sputtering process and these are called weakly ionized plasma because only 10 to power minus 4 fraction of the gas atoms are ionized. Okay? Uh, for heavily ionized uh, plasma, you will have this factor uh, 10 to power minus 2 or larger than that. Okay? Uh, not all the species in the plasma have same energy. Electrons have most of the energy uh, to the order of 1 to 10 electron volts and if you measure their temperature uh, by an expression that energy divided by Boltzmann constant, then you will get these temperatures in Kelvin for different species. Okay. So, electrons have most of the energies, neutrals are at room temperature and less energy and ions have slightly higher energy. Okay. So, we have these plasma in which we have electrons, ions and neutrals. What happens if we take an electrode, a conducting electrode and uh, put this in between plasma, immerse it in plasma. So, I have this electrode, around it we have plasma. Okay. What would happen to this electrode? Okay. Now, we know that uh, flux of uh, electrons and ions will be impinging on it okay. and uh, since we know that electrons have higher energy and they have a smaller mass, so their velocities are much higher. Okay. Velocity of electrons in plasma are order of 10 to power 7 centimeter per second compared to ions which is around 5 and 10 power 4 centimeter per second. Okay. So, you can say that on average more electrons are impinging on this uh, my electrode okay. 
if more electrons are impinging on it than positive ions then this uh, will get negatively charged. Okay. So, my electrode will become negatively charged and when this uh, electrode becomes negatively charged it will start to repel electrons and attract ions such that there will be a balance between the two and my electrode will remain negatively charged. So, if you immerse an electrode in a plasma it will self charge itself to a slightly negative potential. Okay. With this uh, we will stop uh, here in the next lecture we will uh, discuss about how these charged species move in a electric and magnetic field and how we use these for our benefit. Thank you very much.